The state budget deficit has also blown out from earlier predictions and will exceed $8 billion next financial year. Tomorrow, the government will deliver its response to an audit of the state's finances by Peter Costello. The party room has approved politically dangerous asset sales. Now it's a question of which ones and when. 74 LNP MPs debated Cabinet's still confidential proposal for implementing the Costello recommendations. Some members are very sensitive about politically unpopular privatisation. The LNP has 16 seats with margins under 6%. Well, I'm one of them. <laughs> so you bit nervous about your future then. The former Federal Treasurer told backbenchers the alternatives to asset sales are equally unpalatable. I think massive tax rises uh, would be very poisonous. I think cutting back services would be very poisonous. More than seven hours later, the party room supported Cabinet's plan with a show of hands. Uh, notwithstanding uh, individual concerns on different points, everybody will support the decision that's made th today and they all understand that. Giving uh, his MPs uh, only a few hours to make a response and on behalf of their local communities uh, is nothing short of contemptuous. Voters will find out tomorrow which of the 155 recommendations will go forward and how. In some cases it'll be to do more work, in some cases it'll be to rule out things. The Premier doesn't want to sell port infrastructure or state-owned energy companies, but there has been talk of offloading public housing stock and the Education Department will sell schools that are underutilised. But fewer than 55, which were earmarked for closure last year. We want to get that number to something that uh, is manageable in terms of uh, acceptance by local communities. Parents at Tawong in Brisbane appreciate a small school. I hope they don't close it. I like having a smaller school that's uh, for community. It's like family, you know, everybody knows everybody. The minister says all affected school communities will be consulted. Chris O'Brien, ABC News, Brisbane.